Hello everyone, welcome to the State Day tutorial of the Interreg Central Europe program. My name is Christina Glumatz and I am program officer in the Joint Secretariat of the program based in Vienna. Let me walk you through the topic of State Aid, relevant for project applicants, project partners, project beneficiaries. Tutorial itself is divided in two parts. First one is dedicated to the notion of state aid, and in the second one, program approach to state aid in the programming period 21 to 27 is explained. We shall start in a second. Public support granted by the Transnational Cooperation Program Interreg Central Europe must comply with the state aid rules of the European Union, which are applicable at the point of the time when public support is granted, that is, when the ERDF funds are granted to the project. Now, speaking about the state aid regime and the applicable rules we must comply with, it is the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union, Article 107, which gives an answer to the question, when does the state aid occur? State aid, according to this article, is any aid granted by a member state or through state resources in any form whatsoever, which distorts or threatens to distort competition by favoring certain undertakings or the production of certain goods, in so far as it affects trade between member states. State aid is generally prohibited unless in cases where compatible with the EU internal market. All of the mentioned conditions in this article have to be fulfilled in order for state aid to occur. Therefore, state aid is present in Central Europe project when the aid comes from the state or through state resources. This is always the case for the Interreg Central Europe program. When the recipient of the aid is an undertaking, what is an undertaking? It is an entity engaged in an economic activity, but in the context of the project. Then, the undertaking needs to receive an economic advantage, which it would not gain under normal market conditions. Further, this aid is selectively favoring certain undertakings, which is usually the case in Central Europe program, and the aid distorts or threatens to distort competition, almost certainly yes, when there is advantage given, and the aid affects trade within the European Union. This is usually so since ETC programs generally do not have purely local effects. The Interreg Central Euro program addresses state aid in all phases of the project life cycle, yet the key step of state aid approach is already in the application stage when submitted applications undergo specific state aid assessment focused on the listed criteria in order to determine whether or not state aid is present in certain project proposal. Particular attention is given to the assessment of the status of undertaking on partner level, that is whether the lead partner and or any of the project partners are undertaking, and if yes, is there an economic advantage for those partners identified as undertakings? As it was said previously, undertaking is any entity engaged in economic activity. Economic activity itself it's broadly defined as offering goods or services on a given market. Therefore, comprehensive list of economic and non-economic activities does not exist. Um, please keep in mind that state aid applies only if partners carry out project activities for which it can reasonably be assumed that they are of economic nature. Question to be raised here is could in principle planned project activities be carried out by an entity in order to make a profit. It is also to be noted that if the project partners carries out non-economic activities in the project, there is no state aid relevance. Even this organization normally outside the Interreg Central Europe project carries out activities of an economic nature. The contrary can also occur 
that economic activities are performed in the project by an organization which normally does not carry out economic activities. This then could result with state aid relevance. To conclude, the classification of an undertaking is specific to project activities, not to the status of an entity, such as public or private. And what determines whether or not the entity is undertaking is answer to the question, does it or does it not carry out economic activities in the context of the project? So undertaking can be public body, NGO, university, private firm. Probably most difficult to determine is whether there is advantage which undertaking would not have obtained under normal market conditions, or whether they are relieved, whether undertakings are relieved of costs that they would normally have to meet. It also needs to be noted, besides determining presence of A at the level of project partners, which is direct aid, it is also necessary to consider whether entities which are not project partners receive any advantage. So to say whether there is indirect aid. For example, free of charge services could be given by project partners to companies such as consultancy services or trainings free of charge. Then this would present indirect aid. In order to assess presence of state aid in projects, Information provided in the application form is very important. Therefore, project applicants are asked to provide comprehensive and complete information. We bring to your attention section B.1.6, where next to the partner's thematic competences and experience, please also provide full information on main business of partner organization, as well as whether it normally performs economic activities, that is whether it offers goods and services or services on a market. Like it was previously pointed out, remember that not only profit-making companies perform economic activities. In addition, make sure that the role and involvement, contribution and main activities of project partner in the project proposal are well described and that the provided information is full. Then in section B.1.8, partners need to define origin of their contribution to project budget. This is this 20% of partner contribution. Make sure that source of partner contribution indicated in this section is correct. Co-financing of partner can be secured through partner's own resources or through external funds or with combination of these two options. For state aid purposes, it is relevant to indicate if partners intend to use external public financial contributions to their budget. For example, ad hoc co-financing scheme, which are set up at the national or regional level for the participation in interact projects so-called match funding. Then there is section B.1.9, state aid information. In this section, applicants, potential future project partners, so to say actually provide their own assessment of the state aid relevance of planned project activities. Further, they also identify if there is potential indirect aid to be granted to target groups and final beneficiaries. This self-assessment builds on the following key questions. Is the partner involved in economic activities within the project? If yes, does the partner receive a selective advantage throughout the project? And last, does any third party receive a selective advantage through the project, which it would not have obtained under normal market conditions? In addition to listed sections, in part C.4.1, if infrastructure investment is planned, when describing it, it is necessary to provide information whether this infrastructure will be commercially exploited or not, or will it be publicly available for free. In section B.1.3, there is a question on subtype of partner, which offers four possible answers, categories of enterprises, 
micro, small, medium, and large. This is in line with the GIVA regulation, General Block Exemption Regulation. Therefore, Please refer to Annex 1 of this regulation and select applicable according to the criteria given. To this purpose, an enterprise is considered to be any entity engaged in an economic activity, irrespective of its legal form. For the end, last part, you need to provide information on sector of activity. Hence, answer the respective question in section B.1.3 by selecting applicable from the statistical classification of economic activities in the European community. In the application package published on the Interreg Central Europe website, there is a PDF file of the application form, which contains detailed guidance with important information. You are strongly advised to read those carefully. We will now move to the possible results of state aid assessment of project proposals. The results of this assessment may lead to one or more of the following scenarios for project proposals, which will be selected for funding. No state aid relevance. In such case, there will be no contractual conditions on state aid. Risk of state aid that can be removed. In this case, specific obligations with the aim to eliminate the state aid costs will be given and will be included in the subsidy contract. For example, wide dissemination of certain project outputs. These obligations, of course, will have to be respected. Then, the state aid assessment may result with the direct state aid to be granted to project partners. In this case, it will be the entire ERDF budget allocated to the concerned partner that is regarded as state aid and that is granted under the General Block Exemption Regulation, or GBER, or, in exceptional cases, under the Minimis Regulation. We will apply these two options in order for the state aid to be compatible with internal market. Applicable criteria, of course, from stated regulations will have to be fulfilled. Last, there might be indirect state aid to be granted to third parties outside the project partnership. In this case, conditions setting a threshold to the aid granted to third parties will be set. Also, general block exemption regulation will be applied. On the next slide, we will provide an overview of the Central Euro Program approach to state aid, and we will compare period 1420 with period 2127. So in case when there was no stated relevance of project proposals. Approach from 1420 period applies in the period 2127 as well. Same for the risk of state aid, which can be removed. As previously explained, obligations will be in the subsidy contract, which will have to be respected and which aim to eliminate the state aid costs. Now, when it comes to granting direct state aid to one or more project partners, in period 1420, ERDF budget for specific activities and deliverables, which were state aid affected, was state aid granted to the project partner by the member state Austria under the minimis rule. This has been changed in the period 2127. In this programming period, the Central Europe approach is that the entire partner budget, entire ERDF granted to the partner is state aid, and it is granted under the general block exemption regulation. General block exemption regulation, or GBER, allows to implement a wide range of public support measures without prior notification to the European Commission, as long as all criteria given in the regulation are fulfilled. It includes a block exemption for aid granted in the context of interact projects. This is this Article 20, which we will be applying. Regulation is from 2014 and has been amended in 2021. And ceiling of public support in Article 20 is 2 million euro of total public contribution per undertaking per project. And aid intensity is aligned to the program co-financing rate it is 80%. However, please note 
that in case state aid relevant partners receive ERDF from the program under the GBER regulation, they cannot receive any additional public co-financing to their budgets. Therefore, state aid relevant project partners who plan to obtain external public co-financing for their partner contribution, this 20%, they will have to receive ERDF from the program under the minimis regime. Please also note that the Interreg Central Europe program does not grant de minimis aid to primary production of agricultural products, nor to aquaculture and fisheries sectors. In case of indirect state aid to be granted to third parties outside the project partnership, in period 1420, it was granted under de minimis regime by the member state where the partner implementing affected activity is located. This is also changed in Interreg Central Europe Program 2127. Indirect aid will be framed under GBER Article 20A. This article has been introduced with, me, with the amendment of the regulation from 2014 in 2021, and it, sim it brings simplifications. There are no reporting and monitoring requirements from the, for the project partner who grants indirect aid to third parties. There is the threshold of 20,000 euros per undertaking per project, which needs to be verified. So state aid approach in Central Europe program in period 21-27 is following. Direct aid, which will be granted to affected project partners, consists of the total ERDF budget of these partners. It will be framed under GBER Article 20. Threshold is 2 million euros per partner per project, and maximum aid intensity is 80%. This is total public contribution, which means that partners cannot receive any additional public co-financing to their budgets once they receive direct aid under GBER Article 20. Instead, what partners who wish to receive additional public co-financing to their budgets, the minimis regulation can be applied. However, we point out the applicable threshold to 200,000 euros or 100,000 euros in case of road freight transport. This threshold is applicable per member state and it's accumulated over the period of three fiscal years. In Interreg Central Europe grants de minimis by member state Austria. The minimis declarations will have to be provided during project contracting phase in order to check that the threshold, which is applicable, has not been exceeded. Also important to note that partners receiving additional public co-financing to match the ERDF granted by the Interreg Central Europe are also receiving the minimis from the member state, which is giving this public co-financing or from the member state where this public co-financing comes from. The minimum threshold also counts per single undertaking. And in case project partner is part of a group, the entire group is considered as one single undertaking and the minimum threshold applies to the entire group. To conclude, in case the minimis is applied to grant state aid for state aid relevant to state aid relevant project partners, the amount of the minimis aid granted to an undertaking to a project partner within Interreg Central Europe project is in the end linked to the respect of the de minimis threshold at the moment of granting the aid. This might lead to the reduction of public contribution to reduction of ERDF granted by the program 
in order to ensure the respect of the applicable de minimis thresholds. It will be in the contracting phase that projects will clarify and confirm which regulation is to be applied, whether direct state aid is going to be granted under GBER Article 20 or under the minimis rule. Regarding the indirect aid to third parties in Central Europe 2127, we are not using the minimis. New article introduced with the amendments in 2021 for indirect aid of limited amount, which has no reporting and monitoring requirements. Threshold is 20,000 euros per undertaking per project. And this threshold needs to be verified by the MHAS. In practical terms, the, that this means that the project partner, which is given contractual obligations on indirect state aid to be granted to third parties, needs to contact MHAS and provide the calculation of the aid which third parties will receive prior to implementing activities which is affected with indirect aid, but once when undertaking receiving the aid, so when beneficiaries of indirect aid are determined. With this, we have come to an end. I would like to use the opportunity to remind you on a couple of important things. Since there will be changes in the approach of Interreg Central Europe 2127 to state aid. Partners receiving ERDFS direct aid cannot apply for any public co-financing for their project budget if this aid is received under cheaper. Information in the application form showing source of partners co-financing is important and will have to be in the end confirmed in the contracting phase. In case of direct aid granted under the minimis to project partners, restrictions to possible budget increase sense of budget modifications will apply. Last, calculation of indirect aid must be verified by the MHAS prior to implementing affected activities. Thank you for your attention. I wish you all the best and good luck with the project proposals. Here you have listed our website, the website of the Interreg Central Europe program, and you are invited to consult other documents on state aid, such as program manual, resources on the website of the European Commission, DG competition, but also resources available at national, regional, or local level. Thank you and goodbye.